There you go. Cool. Hey, how's it going? And welcome back to Qantas on the FTOG server. In the last episode, we did a little bit of open computer's magic to make it so that I can request mo uh, items from my storage from downstairs where the storage drawers are, up here, and I don't have to go down there and find them. And between episodes, I've moved all the stuff out of the chests. So, it looks a lot tidier in here now. And in this episode, we've advanced to the next era, which means we now have access to some other mods. And one of those mods might actually give us a really good autocrafting method, which we can tie in with open computers. So, let's get started. Since last episode, I worked a little, on, a little bit more on the script, as you can see from what's in front of me. And I've made it so it, can, it works out and shows you how much storage space is available. So currently I've got 670 storage drawer slots downstairs. It gives you a progress bar and it's always running so that it's constantly going off and grabbing the information, refreshing the, the data it's in on what's stored so that we don't have to wait around because scanning through 300 drawers was a little slow. Try doing 670. It's quite slow. So I made it so it's all running at the same time. And I've also upgraded the screen from a screen tier 1, which gave us one color, to a screen tier 2, which gives us, I think it's 16 colors, might be 8. can't remember exactly. So as you can see though, we've got two colors. Cool. And it also gives us the ability to do touch screen. Now you can enable the touch screen by removing the keyboard, which will mean you have to run the program on startup and then disconnect the keyboard. Or in your lower code that you write, you can tell it to disable the keyboard. But we can right click here and the screen comes to life. We don't have to actually go into an interface. Now, if I do need to go into the interface, I can bring it up. Just hold down the sneak key and right click and it comes up as normal. But in this case, we're going to do it like this. And as I said, it's always running. You'll see in the top right every now and then it'll come up with refreshing, which is just when it goes off and grabs some refreshing. Still a few bugs with this program and a few quirks I'm not quite happy about. I'll probably work on in the future. But for now, let's do a bit of a search. So we can search down here. So let's go redstone. R. E. D. Once again, not something I'm overly happy about, but it will do. Uh, so we have 198 redstone in, th in the system. Let's right click on that guy. Brings up a little interface, and there's that refreshing thing, which we'll go around in a moment. If I go request 32, it will disappear, and we go into the chest here, and there will be 32 redstone. How's that? And of course, on top of that, we can return everything in there by clicking the little return thing up there. Um, what I thought I would do though is I would make up a Steve Factory Manager, which is one of my favourite mods to do, and we'll set up some auto crafting with that. So let me request up everything and I'll make one of those up and I'll come back in a moment. One of those. And one of these guys. Cool. Oh, I have missed these. Now, what I was thinking of doing as part of this crafting is actually adding another chest. Uh, and, and making it so that when we craft things via the open computers world, so this interface here, it will spit the item into the chest and then the inventory manager will take it out of the chest, craft this thing up and stick it back into the storage or back into the main chest. But I think for now what I'm going to do is just put it probably about here. So we'll stick that there and I can always rearrange this and put it downstairs later on. So hopefully I can do what I want though, if we do it this way. Actually, change your plan slightly. Let's take this guy out. And we'll stick it there. And it will be in my bag. Here. Stick that there and I'll grab a transpose. I think it's in here. Is there a, oh no, the screen. Uh, there is one in the storage though. Let's see if we can find it. So, train, uh, uh, there it is, right at the top, 
And we will grab one of these. One transposer. And we'll stick this down here. At the bottom. No, I won't. Stick it. Um, you will notice, of course, that this computer cable is going between the computer, which is there, and the monitor. That's just so that we can connect them up. Uh, in this case, though, I don't want to do that. I want to grab my transposer and stick it right next to the existing transposer. And we will stick a crafting table on top. Uh, do we have a, do we have a crafting table somewhere? Uh, let's go. This is going to take oh, heaps of stuff. C. R. Should have it this way. Oh, up space. Uh, R. You'll notice that I can't type either. I haven't support. Haven't added support for that. Crafting. I must say, it's much easier to do it here. We do have one crafting table, which is awesome. Let's grab one of those. One crafting table. And that should go into here. There we go. One crafting table. And I was thinking what we we'll should do is we'll make it into a Tinker's one because we can store items in it. And it doesn't really need to be one of these, but it will just help out for working with your patterns. Because now we can go into here and we can say, okay, I would like to make, let's go, what could we get? A button? Or polish and the site, that'd be perfect. We can set that like that, and we can set up the open computers to put into here in the same pattern. So then in here we'll go create a trigger, set that there, create an input, and the input will take from our crafting station. Doesn't matter, really matter where we do it from, let's go up. But we do need to give an ID. We want to say item uh, 1, <coughs> which will be the first slot, I believe. And we will make it a blacklist. So anything that's in the first slot, we will take out. We want to stick this into a auto crafter. And we'll go into crafting and go into here. Slot. Oh. Hmm. No. Oh. Ah, okay. I've forgotten you had to specify which recipe. You can't just say slot one, slot two when it's coming from here. Ah, okay. That's. Hmm. Okay, going to have to have a change of plans on that one, I think. Let's take that guy out. The whole word. Uh, okay, what else have we got for crafting? Because that doesn't work, and I'd still want to do it. What about crafter? Um, these guys here, Sakura workbenches. I think they're just standard workbenches made of wood, yeah. Uh, fuse wood. Crafting T1, you have to specify the type. We don't have Ender I.O. yet. Analog Crafter. That might work. That could actually work. And we only need a chest and a lever. And then some planks. So let me grab some of that. I'll be back in a second. We need to make ourselves the Analog Crafter. Because crafting table. One of those. Now, if I understand this correctly, we should be able to put that down uh, there. So if you haven't used one of these guys before, it's not too difficult. You can insert items from various different sides and choose which side. So by default, it takes it from everywhere. Uh, you can have it disabled, you can have your down, your up, your north, your south, your west, your east, or access from everywhere. And you just stick your items into here as you need them. So let's make a crafting table, which should be like that. 
quite sure why that's not moving. What I'll probably do is move this downstairs. Um, but for now, we'll do this and we'll stick the. Bag. <laughs> uh, so we'll stick that there for now. And then we will put the hopper down there. This is entirely for demonstration purposes, of course. You do out there is, and I'll craft up. Put that there. And now, of course, we can insert from the transposer here into the analog crafter. Uh, we could change this around to work, but anything this makes will go into here, which will be taken out from the bottom. Um, but I'll try this. Oh. <laughs> okay, I think I just made some sticks. Um, so as you can see, it's quite quick. We may need to change the setting here to be uh, redstone on or redstone pulse. In fact, I might do that and configure it up. But for now, it should be fine. But now if we actually go down here and look at the hopper, you'll see that there is a, a button and some sticks. So it works and it actually seemed to work pretty fast. I was expecting a lot slower than that. Um, put some uh, other stuff back in. Like that. Um, so that's how that works. Not too bad to do and it means we can automate the process of putting that in there and then we'll stuck the items out. So what I'm going to do now though is I'm going to modify my code a little bit to automatically insert things into this guy in a specific pattern and we'll be using a similar concept that we were using for the storage drawers and putting in the chest but in this case we'll be taking it out of the storage drawers and putting it straight into the analog crafter. So I'm going to write that code up because it's boring to look at and I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so I've rearranged things a little bit. We've now got the transposer here with a crafting station on top, which we're going to call the Luna, and the analog crafter next to it. I've added a controller slave underneath the transposer because you can't have an, a one transposer talk to another transposer and move stuff across inside the computer network the transposer you're working with has to be able to connect to both sides bit of a pain uh, but we could move the slave to the other side of the storage area and have all the craft stuff there and it was still us to do it or we could do some fancy magic later on with some ender chests or something similar like that uh, but for now i've just set it up that way and i've used the basic code I had in the last episode just for testing purposes so it is a little sluggish uh, and it's not hooked into the main program but I will between episodes add support in for that but what we could do here is we can create ourselves a recipe so this is what we're going to call our learner and we just set up something like iron pickaxe like that we can go over to here and go learn and what that will do as you can see, see the ingots, the sticks, and it returns it to storage, so it takes it out of here, sticks it back into the drawers, and then it scans through all the uh, drawers, which does take a little while. But once it's finished scanning, it'll then you, you can then see it collecting up the items, sticking into the analog crafter, and may, uh, which makes the items, and you can see that it's learnt that it's one times Minecraft iron pickaxe. If we look in the folder that would have created cool recipes, you'll now see that Minecraft Iron Pickaxe is here, which is quite nice, as well as Minecraft Sticks. If we go now go craft Minecraft Iron Pick. Once again, of course, I'll have all this in the as part of the automation. So It'll be a lot easier to work with than this, but we can go craft, it will scan the storage, which does take a little while. But when it's finished scanning, it'll grab all the items it needs. Or it'll come back and fail. <laughs> what have I spelt wrong? 
I see I've spelt Minecraft wrong. Let's try Minecraft rather than Crafact. Try it again. And as I said, it will scan for the storage. I hope that we'll find what we need. No, let's uh let's use pickaxe instead. And hopefully it'll find what we need. And it looks like I'm actually out of iron ingots, that's not a problem. Let's uh use the old get program uh to grab ourselves some um iron blocks. old instead. Obviously when everything's done this will be um, automatically included into the main program so I won't need to worry about all this stuff. And that should go some iron blocks. So of course we should set up the recipe which will create all the let's make a few more than that. Uh, which will automatically convert the iron blocks into iron ingots, but I haven't done that yet, so we'll just place those back into there and we will send it back to storage. Won't take very long, and then we'll recreate, re request our pickaxe. And now, of course, we should have everything we need, so if we go watch this guy. There you go. So it's actually found the items and it's now crafting it up. Once it's finished crafting, it will then suck that item out, stick it back in storage, which it has, and then it will return it, of course, back to um, us to be used. So, I think that's the proof of concept. Make sure that we can craft things up, which it does look like we can. And uh, it's just using the analog crafter, which is a lot easier than I thought it would be. I'm going to merge this code into the main program and also make it so that you it'll automatically craft other items so you can request say the pickaxe and it will go off it'll create if it doesn't have any sticks it'll go create sticks and if it doesn't have any iron ingots then it will craft uh, um, take it from the iron blocks but for now i think this will pretty much do it so i'm gonna end the episode here if you've enjoyed the episode or learned anything from it please do hit that like button if you're new to the channel hit the subscribe if you've got any questions, comments, suggestions, or just want to say hi, leave a comment down below. But otherwise, have a great day, and see ya!